can be one of the hardest decisions you or your family ever have to make. Finding the right nursing home for a loved one. Good morning, I'm Rhonda Schwab. Welcome to Viewpoint. When the time comes in a person's life that he or she is no longer able to take care of themselves and moving into a relative's home is not an option, a nursing home is usually the only other way to go. There is help available for you in choosing a nursing home. It comes in the form of a consumer's guide. The guide is published by Kansas Advocates for Better Care in cooperation with the Kansas Department on Aging and Western Resources. My guest today is Margaret Farley. She's executive director of the Kansas Associates for Better Care. Um, is that correct, Margaret? Kansas okay. Advocates, Advocates for Better for Care. Better sure. care. Uh -huh. You've just changed your name. It That's used to be right. Kansans for the Improvement of Nursing Homes. Yes, we're not quite used to it ourselves okay. yet. Yeah. Now, what made that evolve into the new name? We uh, were founded uh, 20 years ago when uh, pretty much uh, institutional long-term care was nursing homes. Within the last uh, year or so, there's been an explosion of board and care homes and assisted living homes, and we do a lot of advocacy work for residents that live in those facilities also. So we wanted to broaden uh, the um, identity that we had by changing our name. And uh, your organization has over 800 members in Kansas? That's right. Okay. Most of our members are uh, either residents or family members of residents of nursing facilities. Now, how long have you been around in Kansas? Uh, we, are, uh, we were formed, actually, we just finished celebrating our 20th anniversary. Okay. So we've been at it for quite a long time okay. and uh, still have a lot of work to do, unfortunately. What uh, made your organization come ab about in the first place? Uh, actually, uh, uh, we were founded by a group of folks that uh, were based in Lawrence and our, our primary founding member uh, used to do reading mm -hmm. um, to a resident uh, who was blind in a nursing home and she saw some conditions that really disturbed her and sort of catapulted her into um, activism on behalf of residents. Okay. Um, you, uh, you started the, the nursing home uh, looking into problems that were coming out, the complaints that might have been coming out from the nursing homes? Yes, and back then um, there were not very many regulations. When we started finding these problems uh, those many years ago, we found that anyone could work in a nursing home as a nurse aide without any training whatsoever. And so we began to develop a legislative agenda to improve some of the laws and regulations. Uh, and quite frankly, there have been a lot of very major changes and there are a lot of very good facilities mm -hmm. around. It's just that there are still far too many that have some serious problems. As you started doing lobbying for nursing home residents, were you accepted in that arena? Uh, not originally. Mm -hmm. uh, we were seen as really sort of a radical group to be coming into the uh, area and, and making these demands that uh, on behalf of consumers. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the early days, we didn't exactly know um, how to approach the legislature. We were, you know, the, it was a core group that was very frustrated. Um, but within a few years, um, the group really organized itself in terms of a specific legislative agenda. One of the original things we wanted was uh, full pre-employment aid training, and we've never yet gotten that. In fact, people can still begin work without being fully trained as an aid. Okay. Did you see a lot of changes happening right away? Did it take uh, more than three three years, you say? Or did oh, it, yes. Did it, there have been many changes throughout, um, and we've strengthened, worked on uh, better requirements requirements for administrators. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also worked on a lot of aid training uh, programs over the years and regulations. And, um, and, and there have been many changes, uh, and, uh, but still there are uh, significant problems out there. What would you say your current legislative priorities would be in this year? Well, right now, because of what's happening in Congress, there's going to be a lot of focus on uh, trying to hold on to the nursing home reform law at the federal level, and so we've been working on that. As far as the state, we'd like to see sufficient monies for adequate surveys of nursing facilities, and uh, we're p uh, seeing a lot of new board and care fac facilities, and there is not uh, apparently adequate money to have those facilities surveyed at this point in time, so that's another piece of what we want to accomplish. How would you go about getting extra money to do that? Well, that's uh, maybe we'll find a pot of gold somewhere, uh -huh. but uh, we certainly advocate for um, budgetary allocations that are not just taking care of the needs of the providers, but are also protecting, um, but actually are going to the core of it to protect uh, consumer rights and uh, adequate care for consumers. And to ensure that the regulations uh, are being followed, it seems uh, absolutely necessary to have adequate monies for surveys. Okay. 
Um, we want to talk about some of the, the uh, choices in making the right nursing home. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. where do you start when you want to when you want to make a choice for the right nursing home? Well, um, there are, probably uh, you need to look at where the geographic area is that's going to be close to family and begin to look in that area because one of the most important things is to be able to have family visits and have it be a familiar place. Uh, it's very important. One of the major things that you need to do once you narrow it down to which facilities you want to look at is uh, to take a look at the most recent survey that is public information and should be available to you when you look look at the facility. It will tell you a lot about what inspectors saw when they when they initially went in. It's very good to go and uh, have a couple of meals um, to visit on uh, different shifts and uh, and also to if you have a chance to talk to other family members that have residents mm -hmm. uh, in the facility. Okay. We talked about that consumer guide earlier. There is an 800 number. I think we have it. You can put it up on the screen here. Uh, it's 1-800-432-3535. When you call that number, they will instruct you on how to get a booklet. And uh, I'm holding one of the pamphlets, one of the book, the actual booklet right now. And there's also a pamphlet that's available. And um, we can go through that, some of the points in the pamphlet that will help. Okay, and they can also get that mm -hmm. by calling our office as well. Okay. Um, to, uh, and we'll mail it out for just a $3 postage and handling charge. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break right now. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of those choices available in the pamphlet and talk more with Margaret Farley. Welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Rhonda Schwab, joined by Margaret Farley. Margaret is director of the Kansas Advocates for Better Care, and we're talking about choosing the right nursing home. There's a guide that's put out, and Margaret knows a lot about this guide. She helped put it together. And right now we're going to go through some of the points in the guide that helps uh, a patient or their family choose the right nursing home. Uh, the first thing we want to look at are the levels of care. Margaret, can you kind of explain what, you, what uh, they're talking about when they say the levels of care? With regard currently to nursing facilities, the um, most uh, common uh, distinction right now are, is, is basically two different levels of care, and that's if it's a Medicare unit, it's a skilled nursing unit, uh, very short-term stay generally, at least in that unit. And it's usually someone coming out of the hospital for a fractured hip or a stroke that needs some temporary uh, rehabilitation. 
children. Um, the other big part of nursing facility care, which is the is the greatest uh, uh, number, is really what used to be called sort of intermediate um, care nursing, and that is uh, what. I think a lot of people think it's just general nursing facility care where you have 24-hour licensed nurses and you have uh, people there able to help people with their uh, activities of daily living. Okay. Um, there's Medicaid and Medicare available? For exactly. And uh, really Medicare is generally just very short term. A lot of people who enter a nursing facility uh, frequently exhaust their assets uh, after a certain period of time. Uh, I think the average is right around in the neighborhood of 12 months or so because nursing facility care is very expensive. So people, it's very important if you go into a facility uh, and you are not certain that you're going to have money till the ends of the earth, um, to know that it's a Medicaid certified facility. About what would be the percentage that Medicaid might pay, pay out? For it, a uh, it is according to income, and uh, you uh, at, at this point in time there's a cap, and if your income is greater than $1,374 a month, then you would uh, not be generally eligible without a special kind of trust for Medicaid assistance, and then it just pays whatever the patient contribution is up to the the cost that's allowable for that particular nursing facility. Okay, um, now location, I have to think that that's the most important thing to start out with. I think you're absolutely mm -hmm. right uh, because again it's so important and it's an uprooting kind of experience. Um, most people would like to stay in their own home if at all possible so the next best thing is to be able to stay in your community mm -hmm. um, if that's possible because it's also uh, we find that the healthiest nursing facilities tend to be the ones that have a really open door with the community and it's nice to be able to have uh, have people be able to come and visit uh, frequently. I know we have some real good nursing homes right here in Wichita and there's some up in Emporia that I've, I've seen that are really nice. It's true, it's true and uh, and really you can almost uh, immediately tell the difference between a really healthy functioning nursing mm -hmm. facility mm -hmm. and one that's not uh, up to standard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important to look past uh, what the fancy lobby is and what the sales pitch is that you mm -hmm. get because nursing homes are very competitive for people coming into them so it's important to really look take okay. a close look. Now what part would your physician pay, play in finding your nursing home? Um, generally physicians are helpful because or can be helpful if they do follow their patients into nursing facilities or they might know uh, uh, something about the local facility. The biggest part uh, role that the physician plays is to make sure that you have a solid uh, set of orders uh, regarding diet and medication and activities and therapy that's very critical and you can get a lot of good advocacy on behalf of the resident going in if you have good physician support. It would be important for you to have a copy of your living will or whatever with your physician when you go into the nursing home Absolutely. so they know what your choices would be. That's very important in the health care power of attorney which is used even more. Uh, it's very helpful and the nursing home ought to have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. uh, someone in your family ought to and your physician as well. It's very important to mm -hmm. have. Okay, some, this has to be very important to the physical aspects of the nursing home. You kind of touched on that earlier. What, what are those yes. involved? Well, again, uh, a lot of times people go into just a brand new facility and just think that's great. Uh, and, and sometimes that is a, a good sign, but it's probably not the highest in terms of uh, on the list. Now, although you can take a look at the facility and see how the facility, when you take your tour through, mm -hmm. Uh, how does it smell and how well is it kept up? Not, mm -hmm. not is it fancy, but are things kept clean and uh, are repairs made? And does it look safe for the residents? Are there things on the floor that might make it unsafe uh, for the resident? And, and those are very important things. It would be a good idea to take the person that is going to be in the nursing home in there with you to, to look at the place. Ahead That's a of time. wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. If they're able to do that, an orientation like that I think mm -hmm. really eases the psychological changes. Um, moving along, we have staff and services. What does that involve? Staff is one of the most critical uh, uh, points. Uh, right now in our state, uh, it's only required that you have two uh, hours per resident per day of direct care staff time. It's really important when you go through and talk with the administrator to find out how many patients does each nurse aide have to take care of. And we recommend that it be no more than one to, uh, staff member to seven to ten residents mm -hmm. during the day shift. 
Is that very common to have? Uh, in good nursing homes, it is mm -hmm. uh, more common. Although in, in uh, facilities that aren't functioning well, sometimes we hear stories of AIDS taking care of as many uh, as 20 to 30 residents yeah. at a time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and you can well imagine how difficult that would mm -hmm. be for a nurse to take care of that many sick folks. And and the services that you're talking about? Services, things uh, such as a good solid activity program that has a one-on-one -on -one program if that's necessary. Men access to mental health services. A good number of folks that are in nursing homes uh, probably understandably suffer from depression. And then rehabilitation services are important like physical therapy, speech therapy, uh, occupational therapy, that kind of thing. Okay. When you start to choose a home, do you make an appointment with the director of the home, or how do you how do you go about uh, that? Generally, each home has someone that they call a, an admissions coordinator, mm -hmm. and very frequently it's the social services person who coordinates. If it's a transfer from a hospital. Uh, or from a home health care agency, they will get the uh, medical information uh, lined up. And, and I, frankly, I would advise talking to as many people. The director of nursing uh, or nursing staff have a lot to do, obviously, with how well things go, mm -hmm. as well as the administrator that's ultimately responsible for how things are going. Okay. Um, there's a mention of an inspection report. Does each nursing home have an inspection report? Yes. Every nursing mm -hmm. facility in the state that's licensed by the state or a Medicare, Medicaid certified must be surveyed uh, at least once a year. And many that are not functioning well are surveyed more frequently than that. And it must be in a public place. Uh, and even though it's a, done by a nurse, uh, it's, they're very quite readable and can give you a good snapshot of what the facility looked like. What type of things would be on that inspection? Uh, they'll talk about how well the facility takes care of residents that have, for example, um, if they have problems with dehydration in a facility, if they're not um, making sure that people have adequate nutrition, uh, or if they're not treating uh, residents in a dignified way and in a respectful way. Resident rights uh, kinds of issues are also dealt with as well. Okay, now this would be the big one for me, the quality of the food in the nursing home. How important is that? Yes, it's very mm -hmm. important. And you'd be amazed the two biggest things that affect the quality of life are the number of nursing staff that, staff that you have and the quality of the food. And probably residents would rate the quality of food right up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and some facilities, that's also one of the ways that they can really um, in maximize their profits by spending less on the food. So it's very important to um, sort of drop in for a meal t during the meal time and just see how the meal looks mm -hmm. when, when uh, you're not expecting expected and, and how it's presented and if it's the, you know, an appealing uh, type of meal because you can certainly improve the quality of life if you have a decent uh, dietary uh, program. Mm -hmm. Will they let you go in ahead of time and try out the meal? Uh, yes, it? most facilities mm -hmm. are quite uh, open to doing that. Uh, certainly if they, if you're going to sit down to a meal that they'll, they'll want to, some mm -hmm. advance notice, but if you're also just wanting to take a look at the facility, um, you could drop in uh, to the dining room and, and see uh, what you, how the quality of the food looked. It's very important to do that. Okay. The last thing we want to go through is the explanation of the rates. Do they tell you everything right up front so you can get either Medicaid or Medicare assistance if you need it? That's required that they do that, that they advise uh, people about how to go ahead and apply for Medicaid assistance or uh, whether they might be eligible for Medicare. If you are private pay uh, or, uh, or not, uh, it's very important to get a full listing of the rates. Many times facilities will have a particular room rate and then if you need additional care there's an additional add-on uh, cost for each service if the person needs help with their uh, toileting or if they need uh, uh, care for a bed sore, that kind of thing. Uh, frequently there's add-on costs. You need to ask um, so you know what all the costs are. We don't want to scare anybody, but what would be an average rate? Uh, for I would home? think that in our state right now, we're running at roughly about uh, $2,000 to $2,400 uh, on an average cost. And that's an average just basic rate without the add-on um, that some facilities uh, charge. And then that doesn't count um, uh, medications uh, frequently or therapy services as well. And if a person is paying that personally, does Medicaid or Medicare pick up any of the excess of that? If you are, uh, you're either eligible for Medicaid or you're not, okay. and if you're not, then you're paying the whole tab uh, until you exhaust your um, finances, and then you still participate to the extent of your monthly income and dwindle your assets down uh, uh, quite a ways as well. Okay. 
This is a good time to take a little break. We'll be back in two minutes with uh, Margaret Farley on Viewpoint. Welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Rhonda Schwab along with Margaret Farley. She's Executive Director of Kansas Advocates for Better Care. We've discussed some suggestions for finding the best nursing homes available. Now we're going to talk about what to do when there is a problem. Margaret, should you go to the nursing home administrator first thing? That's always, uh, I think, the best approach. Uh, the facility may have a slightly different uh, chain of command, but for the most part, the administrator is responsible, and it's very good to try to work it out with the facility. Uh, and we advise that unless, of course, it is uh, an, a problem of abuse or neglect, in which case uh, you need to also contact the authorities. And the local police. And the That's right, okay. exactly. Okay. Um, there's also an 800 number that we can put up here on the screen. It's uh, the complaint coordinator for H&E, and the number is 1-800-842-0078, uh, and you would call that if you yes. don't get results from your first attempt? Uh, yes, again, mm -hmm. uh, you would call if, if you're not getting uh, Im any improvements, because mm -hmm. it's also the complaint uh, reporting number, and that's the regulatory authorities, and they are the ones who can go out and investigate the complaint sure that the facility is following uh, the law. Okay, and then there's a second number that we have up. If you're a patient for a longer mm -hmm. period of time and you're under the long-term care, you would call the 800 number for the ombudsman, and that number is 1-800-432-3535. Right, and that's a resident advocate services uh, service through the Department on Aging, and and you can even call that number at the same time that you're also calling Health and Environment, uh, because they uh, frequently can be helpful if they have sufficient staff. They're very short staffed in this state, but uh, they can uh, when they get involved, they can uh, be very helpful. Now, would you go to your family if you if you were in a nursing home and you had a problem? Would you go to your family? And and tell them and then have them contact the authorities if there was a problem of abuse or, or something along that nature? Yes, we always encourage people to um, make a report uh, of some sort, either mm -hmm. within the facility, depending upon the nature of the complaint. Uh, and it's very often residents have, uh, frankly, uh, many residents have a great fear of retaliation. Uh, they're worried that they'll get someone in trouble and that mm -hmm. the, that per person will take it out on them. 
Um, it's the healthiest thing, though, I think, and probably the safest uh, for the resident and for other folks to make sure that um, that gets uh, reported. And if, if one resident didn't have any family, if they're in a different state or whatever, they would go to who first? Uh, very, uh, if they felt that they could not uh, get help through someone in the facility immediately or if they needed uh, to make a report of abuse or neglect, uh, they could call that number. Also, the physician um, is frequently the person that if there has been abuse or if there is neglect, uh, the resident can certainly confide in the physician and the physician has a duty to report that to the authorities as well. Um, when you're signing the forms going in, do they tell you not to bring any valuable items or do, is there any governing rules of the nursing home? Uh, that? Actually, many facilities have different ways of handling that and some of the more progressive facilities have uh, some place where the resident can keep their goods privately, safely in their own room. Uh, many people just sometimes accept in some bad uh, situations that theft is just a part of life in nursing facilities and and really facilities have a duty to investigate um, missing property and to do everything that they can to protect residents property so that residents can keep their uh, favorite things with them without fear of losing them. Would it be a bad idea to sign if they had a waiver of liability that you were supposed to sign? Is that a bad idea to sign something like that? Uh, it generally is, mm -hmm. but even if you do sign it uh, and if it waives uh, legal rights that you have, then it's unenforceable, which means that, uh, of course, the facility can't hold that against you. Uh, and and uh, the facility is still going to have a duty to make sure that their uh, employees are not doing things that are wrong, uh, mm -hmm. and nothing you can sign is going to get them out of that duty. Now, I'm sure a lot of people have relatives in other states. If you get a letter from somebody in a nursing home and they say, you know, I'm having things stolen, you know, I'm not being treated right, what, what would they do? How would they get a hold of your organization or, or somebody else to help represent them? Uh, well, we can, I, I can give you our phone number uh, if, if that's, um, uh, it's 913-842-3088. Uh, okay, I think uh, we have a I think we have a graphic to put okay. up on that if we want to put it up for a second that way people can write that number down. Okay. And uh 913-842-3088. Mm -hmm. uh, our number was recently listed in one of the consumer reports uh, articles. Um, they did a real nice series on nursing home mm -hmm. care. Uh, and we provide a lot of information about individual nursing homes. Uh, we report about what their staffing ratio is and that type of thing. And this is the right number to call also if you want to join KABC. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, a minimum uh, membership of $20 a year and you can receive uh, roughly eight newsletters a year uh, to keep up on what uh, information is happening in long-term care facilities. And we'll certainly try to help out with any um, complaint or concern uh, that you have. We also always refer that to authorities um, if we have the person's permission to do so. Where do you see you going into the next year? What would be some things in line for your organization? Uh, one of the major things that we've been working on is, uh, aside from all of our work in, legislation, in the legislature, we're really finding a great deal of power with um, local family groups that unite together and get a common voice about concerns that they frequently see um, to try and effect change in their own nursing facility and try not to feel so helpless about problems. And we've had some um, it, very strong groups in Kansas that are, I think, um, a good model for other family groups to follow. Okay. Margaret, we really want to thank you for joining us today. Thank all of you for watching. A lot of good information for consumers. That's it for this Sunday edition of Viewpoint. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.